Hey guys, this video is all about what I learned about seawalls from living oceanfront on both Wells Beach and Cape Coral, Florida. So we are going to talk about seawall construction, what you can and can't do, and the best way to go about it. And we're going to get after it right now. But before I get into that, my name is Michael Patterson and my partner is Margaret. We are local realtors with Living in Southern Maine and EXP Realty. If you want to learn everything there is to know about Living in Southern Maine, click subscribe and tap the bell so that you'll be the first to know about the current market in Southern Maine. Okay guys, today we're going to focus on Crescent Beach because this is where I lived for many years and I got very familiar with storms and how to prepare for storms and watching got porches like this guy lost his porch. I've seen that house get hammered several times over the years. And uh, I want you to pay attention, not so much on the seawall as what's behind the seawall, okay? Because that's very important. Now, coming up here, we'll just stop the footage right here. All right, guys, so that right there, what you're seeing is a, about 13 feet of the wall. It goes down about, it's about 14 foot tall because there's like a four foot footing on the uh, bottom of that wall. And every summer, starting in like July, about seven to nine feet of sand by you know mid-August will wash in from the ocean. And then every fall it gets pulled out. So yeah, believe it or not, that's how much sand goes in and out with the seasons. And so in the wintertime, you don't have any sand. And what happens is uh, the water's hitting that wall really, really hard. And uh, that's what you saw in the, some of the video at the beginning. And the water comes over so fast, it creates like a slurry with the sand on the other side, turns it into like a super stew, and then it pushes the sand either to the neighbors or out into the street, or it just takes it back into the ocean. So it empties out the sand that's behind the wall, and then eventually the, the seawall will fail forward and actually fall into the ocean. You'll see evidence in the wintertime. If you walk along these seawalls, you'll see old seawalls uh, um, that have failed and fall in, fell into the ocean. Now you might think you'd like to add a bunch of rocks in front of those seawalls. Those rocks are expensive, guys. If you could do it, you know, they run you anywhere from two to $400 a piece. And you're gonna spend thousands of dollars doing that, tens of thousands actually. And the D Department of Environmental Protection will not let you do that. So when you see people adding rocks, they're basically not getting permission. Same with adding dirt behind the wall when it washes out every year and everybody does it, but it is against the law. And as I cruise along here, you can see that everyone's losing sand behind their wall. And this was taken in 2002. It happens every year. Some, some years are worse than others. And uh, everyone's losing sand or sod behind their wall. And they're just adding it back every single year. And it keeps getting worse over the years as well. So I want to point that out. All right, I just want to stop the footage here. I grabbed a little bit there with my drone. You can see that underneath that guy's house, it got washed out. And that's happening too, guys. And that's really dangerous. That's when your house can collapse. You can lose a porch. So... It's a serious issue and you need to make sure you build a proper seawall. Guys, if you're finding this video informative and you're a giving person, please give it a like. I know it's small, but it really helps us a lot. Thanks. All right, guys, let's head back and I just take a closer look at what's going on behind those walls. So basically, you know, typical year, uh, some winters worse than others. They're just losing all their sod, they're losing tons of dirt. Look at that, undermine the whole concrete there. And um, the people that have a lip of concrete, like, I don't know, six to eight to 10 feet uh, back, are there's something going on there. And that's what I'm gonna focus on. Like, look at these places right here. They actually have concrete 12, 15 feet back. So they're not dealing with as much damage. So that's a really important thing that I'm gonna focus on uh, through this video. Look at this sinkhole right there. So you might be thinking, hey, why don't these people just build like a taller seawall? Well, uh, DEP won't allow that. But some people are doing things that the DP, DEP won't allow, like building concrete areas like you just see there on the right. And uh, they're just doing it and getting away with it. Same with adding riprap. So you'll have to make that decision on your own. All right, so you may have a hard time believing what I just said about just kind of doing it. So let's take a look at 2023 here. Fast forward and look at those houses. You can see that they've put not huge stones like you have on the ocean side of their seawall, 
but they're filling in, you know, 10 to 12 feet there of stone and rock to allow the water to actually go down through. Now, I can tell you that the water's coming over so fast, it's still going to get inundated. It's still going to flood, but it's not going to create that soup and drag all that content back over the wall. And when I say content, I mean if you try to use beach sand, which is what I used to use at my house. And what's really hard is getting the sand back in, right? So if you want to bring in five to six yards every spring, well, how are you going to get it in there? There's no room between the houses. So it was really tough. So what I did is I sold this house and purchased a house oceanfront in Florida. And I lived in it for a few years. It got destroyed by the hurricane in 2022. So what I ended up doing is um, I decided to redo the seawall in order to prepare for the next house I wanted to build. I wanted to make sure I had a really good seawall. So I learned a lot. I'm going to share it all with you guys in this video. Okay, guys, in the top left there, that's my neighbor's house in Florida. His seawall was only a few years over, like maybe five years. Brand new, a foot higher than mine. And look at all the sod. His beautiful lawn's gone. Water, the water mixed, the waves mixed with the dirt and then pulled all the dirt back over the seawall. And the seawall, the buttresses, those metal rods started to fail. And the seawall was actually starting to lean into the river, right? So my seawall is on the right hand side and you can see I've got a 15 foot concrete captain's walk and that is why my seawall despite the fact that it was you know 40 years older actually weathered the storm better than his so that captain's walk is critical for allowing the waves to disperse and lose some of their power before they spread out and go back into the ocean. So what pattern are we seeing here, guys? Take a look at our seawall in Florida on the right-hand side there after the hurricane. The captain's walk, it's still there, even though it was a foot lower than my neighbor's yard who lost all his fill. And now take a look at Maine again, and the people that had those captain's walk, every spring, their cleanup is minimal because they're not losing all of that gravel and sand behind their seawall because they've got a captain's walk. Guys, Margaret and I love putting these videos together for you. Our job first and foremost is realtors. So if you're interested in a particular neighborhood in York County, Maine, just give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email or our favorite, schedule a Zoom. We can help you make a smooth move to Southern Maine. All right, what you're seeing on the left there, guys, the excavator broke out the captain's walk in pieces and he piled it up there. You see it all on the right, it had to be hauled off. They left the portion of the seawall that was still in the water going down because they're gonna replace that as they go with new panels. These panels are 10 feet long, full of reinforcement rod, and they get driven down into the sand. So that's what you're looking at there. In Maine, guys, they don't buy panels. Typically what they do is they put in forms and they pour the concrete with rebar, but that introduces salt water. But still, it's a darn good wall. And uh, I just wanted to make sure you saw a little bit of the process. I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna show you a lot more coming up. All right, guys, what I wanna point out here, there's my seawall on the left. And that arrow is pointing to buttresses that on each 10 foot panel that goes into the ground is two buttresses made of steel. They hold onto the top of the wall, very important because remember the walls tend to fail into the ocean. They go, those rods go back to a huge concrete plug with a hook and they are cemented in. That wall's going nowhere. On the right is my neighbor's wall, okay? He's actually on the left, sorry to confuse you like that. But anyway, he's got one buttress every other panel. And that's part of the reason not only did he lose his sand because of the hurricane, but his seawall is actually starting to fail and fall into the ocean. Okay, so you want to make sure you've got a lot of buttresses because those buttresses are what keep the seawall from failing and falling into the ocean. The other thing that I want to point out that I did is between each 10-foot buttress, okay, they're only about four foot wide, but they're 10 feet down into the sand, I poured concrete with reinforcement bar in each one of those columns just to add even more strength to the wall. The neighbor did not do that. All right, let's take a closer look at my neighbor's wall on the right. His wall was built in 2022, just before the hurricane. Of course, he decided not to spend the extra money to go an extra foot higher, which code now allows. So consequently, he lost all of his grass and turf, a whole bunch of sand that he had to have to pay to have come in. Thank God he, he's got room around his house to get in there. And so what I did, knowing that his wall could compromise my wall, is I'm actually building reinforcement wall 
along there as well because you're sometimes you're only as good as your neighbor's wall so you need to keep that in mind as well all right next what they do after they backfill behind the wall is they start putting the riprap in in front of the wall you can see they're just dumping it in the water there and uh, so I say dumping but it's actually placed and that's controlled by code I wanted bigger stones and uh, wouldn't wasn't allowed so you know there are some restrictions on doing this so just some more there I had a lot of riprap brought in much as they possibly allow me to put in and um, you know so they're a little bit on a small side so I may have to after storms get in there and, and put them back after they get pushed away guys we put together a unique relocation guide that you can find in the description down below inside you'll find lots of details on the towns in York County with information on population school systems whether or not there's any large fresh bodies of water in case you want a lakefront property or a riverfront, and if there's a cute downtown area that has that main charm that you might be looking for and much more. Again, you'll find a link to it in the description down below. Okay, here we're looking at my neighbor side of the wall here. So I'm just gonna pour concrete all inside each one of those holes there that you see. And then as we turn left, you see all this reinforcement rod, and I'll explain all that in a second, but there's reinforcement rod going down in each one of those holes right there, and you can see that the buttresses are tied into the wall as well. So this thing is like super packed with concrete, and you can see that the uh, concrete will actually dip down before it comes back up with the captain's walk, just to save a little bit of money on concrete there. All right, there you go. That's the rear of the captain's walk, guys. You can see they dug down a little bit deeper, so I'm going to get about a foot thick of concrete in there with all that rebar. I'm going to get about six inches of captain's walk there. It's all being held up in the air by these little plastic stands. It's a grid pattern, and that is going to be completely one pour, single pour concrete. That's my neighbor's yard. He went a foot lower because he wanted to save money. His panels are only eight feet deep, and he lost all that fill too. He had to have all that fill brought in after the last storm. And what happened guys when they started pouring this is it was one pour. So the cement trucks were just lined up and they kept coming in and the foreman, you can see him there directing everybody. He was doing a great job at just keeping the trucks coming and going. And he had his whole crew there pushing that cement around. And that captain's walk extends over the top of the seawall. So there's literally reinforcement rod connecting all through this from down into the ocean, into the sand, all the way up, back on top of the, of the land, and then 15 feet back that is all connected reinforcement rod. All right, guys. So here we are coming towards the completion of the wall. You can see that uh, they basically made sure that there was a slope so that water as it splashes up, it'll go back into the ocean. And uh, these guys were troweling out the uh, imperfections. You could see uh, this guy's running a brush over it to make sure it's got you know a little bit of texture so that you don't slip and fall if you're walking on it when it's wet. I thought that was nice. And I said earlier that it was 15 foot captain's walk wide, uh, wide, but it's only about 12 and about 100 feet long. I had a lot of frontage on uh, the ocean here in Cape Coral. There it is, uh, you know, hardening up. So they're going to be removing the forms there. There you go. That's what it looked like. You can see the rip wrap a little bit there off to the left. Now you'll notice that they put sod in, guys, but I don't really care because right there at the edge where uh, the captain's walk meets the sod, I'm going up about seven feet with another concrete wall so that my pool and my house will be about seven feet off of the top of the captain's walk. So any water comes up over the captain's walk, it's going to hit the next wall and it's going to have to go a heck of a lot higher in order to flood my house again. So hopefully I did a good job with that. We'll see. And what you're looking at there, guys, just the edge. I wanted to see how the captain's walk went right over the edge and you can see the wrap, rip wrap rather underwater at high tide. All right, guys, I hope you found this video informative. And if you did, please remember to hit that like button and subscribe. Leave a comment below if you have something to add or if you have a question. And until next time, Margaret and I hope to show you around town.